All right. Uh, what I want to talk to you about in, I guess, this little screencast is just how we identify different electrical components and maybe show you a picture of, of what they look like. Whenever we talk about electricity and components, uh, the electrician or the electrical engineer has to maybe be able to take an electrical picture and then turn that into something. Uh, that electrical picture is what we call a schematic. Um, a schematic diagram, unlike a blueprint, like for an architect, for example, uh, a blueprint, when, when you're building a house, it sort of looks like a house. But, a bl but a, an electrical blueprint, or as a, a, a schematic as it's called, really doesn't look anything like what it's supposed to, really doesn't look like anything at all what it is. Uh, and in that end, electrical schematics are what, what I will call maybe like a functional diagram. It'll show you how a circuit should behave, but it won't tell you necessarily what components per se are in there. Um, you know, for, for example, with, with a blueprint, it might tell you of a house, it might tell you, you know, use 2 by 10 construction, whatever, uh, for maybe floor joists. But with an electrical schematic, it might say, you know, here's, here's a resistor, you maybe give you a few values, and then it's up to you to figure out, well, what, what components do I need? It, it may be in some greater sense of the matter, uh, you know, there's maybe more detail given depending on the situation, but if I were to maybe really quickly you know, draw you an electrical schematic for a, for a flashlight, for example, um, you know, a flashlight has a power source, it has a you know, resistive element to, or to give off the light and then something to turn it on or off. Uh, this right here, there we go, is an electrical schematic. This, whoops, whoops, right there, that right there is your battery, even though it doesn't look like one. That right there would be your light, and that right there would be the switch that's used to turn it off and on. It doesn't look anything at all like a flashlight. Um, but the importance of being able to understand drawings like this uh, allows, you know, electrical engineers and other folks who design circuits to maybe uh, give us a lot of information in a small space. We don't care what the housing of the flashlight looks like because it's really not that important in order for it to work. As long as the proper connections are made, it is what it is. So without further ado, what I'm going to do is I'm, I, I have on the screen just a couple different pictures. I'm going to show you the picture of the object uh, and the electrical schematic, and I keep my fingers crossed that everything is kind of in the order that I set it up. So this first thing that you see, maybe is familiar to you, maybe it's on some of your homes, I know I had one for the longest time, uh, an antenna. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail as to how these things do what they do, I'm just going to explain what they are, maybe give you a real quick uh, overview of it, and then show you the symbol. Uh, the purpose of this video, I guess, is just to give you an understanding of, well, if you're reading a schematic and you see a symbol that you understand, well, this, this is really what I'm talking about, and then you can go find that part and then figure out what you've got to do from there. Uh, so an antenna is basically something that's used to receive a signal. Um, that would be, you know, an aerial antenna for a TV, but an antenna is something as simple, which, which way am I going? Some, something as simple as just maybe a piece of wire um, that's, in this case, spooled up. The longer this thing is, um, the greater the well, the, the, the length of the antenna depends directly upon the frequency that you're trying to capture. So, you know, we'll leave it at that. Uh, but here's an antenna on the screen. Uh, there is the electrical schematic symbol for an antenna. Okay, resemblance, maybe. Um, but just a triangle with, you know, a line going through it. And that line would eventually connect to another part of the circuit. Um, these right here are what we call capacitors. Uh, I happen to have one of many kinds right in front of me. Uh, capacitors, their ratings are in farads, um, the unit of capacitance. You'll see you know, a certain voltage rating on it as well. That's sort of like how much charge uh, can fit inside the capacitor at a certain electrical energy equivalent, but energy and voltage aren't the same. They're similar but not the same. Don't worry about it right now. Um, but this is a capacitor. It stores electrical energy. Um, and basically, you could imagine a capacitor if you took two pieces of aluminum foil and in between them put maybe a piece of wax paper to insulate the 
insulate the foil and then maybe attach like a lead to one end of the foil and then another end of the other foil and then connected it to a battery. In some really rudimentary sense, that's what a capacitor is, that's what a capacitor does. So when you take that battery away, charge should be left on there. It's kind of like if you rub your feet against the carpet uh, and you get the static build up on you and then it discharges once you touch a doorknob you're kind of acting like a capacitor because you're storing charge, but that's what capacitors do. You can see there in, in the picture on my screen here, there's a bunch of different styles and sizes of capacitors. Um, the one that I showed you right here is what we call an electrolytic capacitor. Um, you know, it's sort of like, almost like what I described. It's kind of like a really thin foil with a piece of, you know, some sort of like paper, wax paper kind of thing, substrate in between the two of them. It's usually soaked in some sort of oil which increases the capacitance. They call that the dielectric. Uh, we'll maybe talk more about that later. But there's a bunch of different uh, sizes and shapes of capacitors you see on the screen. Some look like candy, they're not. Um, don't eat them. Uh, but here is a couple different pictures of what a capacitor electrically looks like on a schematic. You see there's just two parallel lines. Uh, that would be a generic capacitor, uh, maybe what we'll call like a mylar capacitor. They look like little chiclet candies. Um, this middle one is like, it's the electrolytic capacitor. Uh, the reason it's drawn like this is because polarity matters. Uh, one size is the anode, one side is the cathode. And the one with the arrow drawn through it, usually in the world of electrical schematics, anytime there's an arrow drawn through something, that means it's variable. So in this case, this is a variable capacitor. These are sometimes found in radios. The, the, they were very common in the old, uh, older radios, uh, 1950s, maybe as late as the 70s, but I think with how they design things today, they're, excuse me, changing things around. Um, but in either case, uh, that is a variable capacitor. These right here are motors, and this is also a motor, an electrical motor. Uh, in this, it, this specific case, uh, what's on the screen, what I have in my hand, is what we would call a DC motor, a, or a direct current motor. Uh, direct current motors and alternating current motors are s similar but not the same in how they function. Uh, alternating current um, require is usually wire wound everywhere um, and the varying electric current causes a different uh, magnetic field to be created at different points in time which causes the thing to move. We'll talk maybe a little bit more about that again later. I'm just giving you the overview. Uh, DC motors on the other hand usually have a wire on the inside. Unfortunately I don't have, have a, wire, a wire wound component on the inside with a permanent magnet. Um, DC meaning direct current. We'll maybe talk more about those again later. I just want to show you what they look like and what the schematic is. And of course I do not have that handy. Let me take a look on my other thing to see. Oh, there it is. I don't know if you can see that on the screen. There's a symbol for an electrical motor, okay? It's just a circle with an M on it, nothing fancy. Um, so, for what that's worth. Uh, next component I want to show you is what we call a diode. And this picture will do it enough justice. Uh, a diode, it, usually they're black uh, with a gray marking on the one side. One side's the anode, um, which is negative and the other side is the cathode which is positive uh, don't necessarily worry too much about that just yet um, so, oh, there we go so it explains um, anode, so here is the electrical schematic the bottom one where it says schematic symbol the top one device package is what it looks like in some rough drawn um, thing so you can see the side that is the wide triangular base is the anode and the side of the schematic symbol with the line on it is simply the cathode. Um, moving on to the next thing, electrical switch, something like this, okay, you have in your walls, hopefully if you have lights. Um, also, like what you see on my screen as well, switches come in different varieties, serve different purposes, but at the end of the day, they direct current to a different place in a circuit or they just simply shut it off. Um, and here is a multitude of different kind of circuit schematics. Uh, the SPST single pull, single throw 
is what's probably most common to your regular household switch. Maybe a single pull double throw. That would be like in a hallway where one, if you're at the bottom of the staircase, let's say, you turn the lights on when you get to the top of the staircase, you hit another switch and it shuts the light off. Um, and then you could go back down the stairs and turn that light on again. Uh, that's like a single pull uh, double throw to some some matter of it, just a bunch of different things. We'll, we'll talk more about those again later. This symbol right here uh, stands for electrical ground. What ground basically is, is when you're wiring up an appliance, uh, you know, if something bad happens and maybe it gets a surge of electricity, there's usually a, a place where that extra current can go, um, that it's not gonna burn up the appliance, which may start an electrical fire and burn the house down, bad thing. Um, what electrical ground is, is basically a place for that excess current to go. The first symbol you see, I guess it'll be on your uh, left, looks, I don't know, kind of like, well, it's not the arrow, but it's like the lined one. Uh, it is earth ground, meaning it liter the, any excess current will literally go to ground uh, outside. So in residential wiring, you know, there's like a ground wire, so, so to speak, hopefully on most modern constructions. What they do is they literally bury a big rod in the back uh, off of the circuit breaker box, and in the event anything nasty happens, it's being directed into there and outside into the ground. Um, the, middle, the middle schematic symbol is what we call a chassis ground, uh, or if you had like a big metal box, it is, you know, a, a wire is attached to the box safer than not having a ground but still a bit nasty um, experience speaking I had an old radio from like the 1930s or 40s that was metal chassis and I put it on top of a refrigerator turned it on touched the radio touched the refrigerator got a nice shock so there's something being shorted out there last one um, is just another ground I can't recall what it stands for off the top of my head. I, I, no, sig signal ground. So it, the object is just attached to something that causes the signal to, you know, just be grounded somewhere. Don't worry about it too much yet. These are inductors, what they do, and I, I have one right here. What an inductor does, it's basically a loop of wire around something, and it creates a magnetic field when a current passes through it. Here's your symbol for an inductor, just a bunch of bumps. Uh, these are light emitting diodes, or as you all will be familiar with, LEDs, okay? Uh, they look basically like that. They, they functionally almost do the same thing as a diode, except they give off a little bit of electricity. Uh, electrical schematic, right there, the arrows indicate the light is being given off. Uh, we already talked about motors. These happy little things are called resistors. Um, that's basically what they look like. You'll see there's colored banded on them. We'll, we'll talk maybe in another video about the resistor color code. Uh, resistor, most common form of a switch, a volume knob, okay? So you can adjust the loudness of your music, etc. cetera. Um, and the, electric, the schematic symbol, A is what we would call just a regular resistor. Um, something that just, you know, like the first, well, all of those are regular resistors. Um, B is a variable resistor, kind of like this thing right here, sort of like this thing. Uh, C is a potentiometer, which is sort of like this thing as well, only it directs the current off in a different way. Um, they're about the same, don't worry about it just yet. Uh, speaker, looks like a speaker. Um, basically, if you ever noticed with a speaker, it feels like you can stick it to things like it's a magnet almost. Well, that's because there's a magnet in here. Um, and there's also a loop of wire in there, kind of like an inductor. And whenever sound goes through that inductor, it creates a magnetic field within it, which interacts with the permanent magnet um, and causes the diaphragm, you know, paper here to vibrate, which is responsible for sound. Um, that's a symbol. This right here is a transformer. It basically takes uh, a voltage or a current and multiplies it, um, you know, using properties of inductance. Again, inductors, we'll talk about those, um, in proportion to the number of windings that are present. Um, one of these things, transformer, okay? If it's an output of, your, your wall outlet's 120 volts alternating current, this might step it down to maybe 5, 6, 12 volts DC direct current. Um, there's not like a lot of witchcraft that goes on in here to make that happen. It's just a f strategic placement of a few electrical components. There are the symbols. Okay, if you see something like with two bumps facing, uh, that's an inductor. 
Uh, these are transistors, a um, bunch of different types. They're used for amplification, and well, that is the symbol for it. Voltage source or batteries, uh, something that store electrical potential energy, and they come in different shapes. Thanks for watching.